So I want to talk a bit about what it means to have a healthy nervous system or a regulated nervous system. And I think that one of the the better ways to explain that is to actually explain what a dysregulated nervous system looks like. Um, if you've watched my video on the autonomic nervous system and uh, where we talked a little bit about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, you'll know that the sympathetic nervous system is a part of our peripheral nervous system or our autonomic nervous system that gets activated in response to a threat. When we're in a parasympathetic state, we're more concerned with you know survival in the long term. Whereas when we're in a sympathetic state, we're more concerned with survival in the short term. So, you know, when we're resting and we're digesting and we're, we're quite relaxed and at ease, we're, we tend to be in more of a parasympathetic state. Um, our heart rate is lower, respiratory rate is lower, we've got blood flow supporting our digestive system. It's going everywhere in the body, not just to the big muscle groups. Our immune system function is boosted. Our reproductive organs are getting the attention and nurturing that they need. So on the flip side of that, when we're in a sympathetic state, what we tend to see is the body gets put into a mode where it's ready to be more active and to engage in running away from our threat or fighting our, our threat. And so what that looks like is an increase in heart rate, increase in respiratory rate, a diversion of blood flow away from the gut and away from the immune system and away from the reproductive organs to the bigger muscle groups so that they can you know, be combative or take us on a running journey if, if need be. So the goal of having a regulated or a healthy nervous system is to actually not necessarily be in a constant state of parasympathy or rest digest. It's to actually be able to navigate between these systems seamlessly. We're not meant to be stuck in one or the other at all times. We are meant to be able to navigate this and to come down from a threat quickly and elegantly and you know a happy healthy nervous system will be able to navigate those both with ease. So to understand what the opposite of that is is to understand what dysregulation is or to be stuck in a sympathetic state. So a nervous system that, you know, is stuck in either or is a dysregulated nervous system. Typically, we see people stuck in more of a sympathetic state. However, it is possible to get stuck in more of a parasympathetic state. And we'll, we'll dive into that in a second here. Um, but when we're stuck in a, a fight or flight state or a sympathetic state, what happens is, is our body stays in this state where we are more concerned with survival in the moment. And that's all well and good if we've got an immediate threat. We're hiking and we see a bear or you know, something that is a threat to our immediate survival. However, when we are constantly consumed with, with this concern with survival in the short term, then our long-term survival gets put on the back burner. Meaning our body gets stuck in a state of, you know, heightened blood pressure, heightened respiratory rate and heightened uh, heart rate, which can really stress the cardiovascular system. It can lead to, you know, inflammation of the arteries and the heart and, and, you know, cardiovascular disease and so on and so forth. Our immune system isn't getting the nourishment and the, the blood flow that it needs. And we can end up in a state where we're having low immune function, where, you know, maybe kind of get that feeling where we're just on the verge of being sick, or maybe we are sick. Or maybe we have a full, full on, you know, autoimmune condition as a result of this. Um, other things that can look like are gut issues. Gut issues are huge when it comes to dysregulation. We're not getting an adequate amount of, of digestive function as well as blood, blood flow in the digestive system, which can lead to all sorts of things, you know, a sluggish digestive system, constipation, um, or an overactive digestive system. We can have things like an IBS. Reflux is a big part of that. These are all symptoms of dysregulation or being stuck in more of a sympathetic state. Um, you know, other things like a low libido, loss of interest in, in anything sexual is, is a huge piece of that as well. So dysregulation can look very different for many people. Another big symptom of it is increased muscle tension and pain as a result of that. Um, and that's because when we're stuck in fight or flight, 
our muscles tend to tense up so that they are just that much more primed for movement. So yeah, that loss of, of relaxation in the muscles can contribute to physical pain. And so eventually that can end up with different myalgias, fibromyalgia, these types of more chronic pain issues can be a result of a, a dysregulated nervous system. So dysregulation is typically caused by stress and by trauma. Stress is, I mean, stress is everywhere in our lives. And most diseases are stress-related diseases. And, you know, it's, it's usually as a result of a dysregulated nervous system. So dealing with stress is one of the most important pieces to having a healthy regulated nervous system. Before we go into some of these things that can be supportive of regulating a nervous system, I want to touch on being stuck in a parasympathetic state as well. This is a state where we can't really find arousal. We can't increase our stimulus. We have really low energy levels. You know, depression tends to be when we're stuck in more of a parasympathetic state. Our body just doesn't have the resources or the energy to even bounce up in the response of a stress. This is where we have complete apathy. You know, we might look at something that we might deem as being typically a threat to us or something that would normally stress us out and we just get zero response out of it. And that is, you know, a possibility with being stuck in more of a parasympathetic state, which is is also something that is as a result of stress and trauma. So it is important to note that both can be a state of dysregulation and it's not just being stuck in a sympathetic state. So being regulated is, is really working on our body and providing ourselves with tools that allow us to navigate both of these systems with you know a good efficiency and elegance and there's lots of things that are really really important and really helpful for doing this before we dive into them i do just want to mention that trauma is something that's really important to be addressed by a certified practitioner there's lots of great modalities out there that can help with addressing trauma Um, things like emdr somatic experiencing these are really really helpful and when trauma exists in the system they can absolutely contribute to dysregulation and it is really important to work through trauma with a certified practitioner in the meantime there are lots of really great tools that we can use just for stress management and for nervous system regulation in general so some of my favorite things and this list is by no means exhaustive but One of the most important things that you can do for regulating your nervous system is get good quality sleep. And down the road, I'll go into, you know, I'll make a video that's really, really specific around sleep and getting really good sleep hygiene and really supportive sleep. Um, But in the meantime, if you look up any of Dr. Andrew Huberman's work or Dr. Matthew Walker's work, I'll link to those down below. They have incredible resources around sleep and sleep hygiene and and getting good quality sleep. So that's something that's absolutely worth looking into because without sleep, we don't heal. And without healing, our nervous system becomes dysregulated. So sleep is the absolute number one essential to helping to regulate a dysregulated nervous system. In addition to that, rest is also really important. And I'm not talking like slumping on the couch, scrolling through Instagram or like you know, not moving and stressing, laying down. I'm talking actually true, turn the devices off, turn the brain off, rest. And you do not need to earn rest. You can rest at any time. It is essential to nervous system health. It's not something that we, you know, only get if we've accomplished X, Y, Z. No, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is actually rest, turn the notifications off, turn the TV off and let your brain rest 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 it can look different for anyone you know having a bath is great something restful might be cooking you know for one person it might be reading it might be journaling it can be so many different things but for me cooking is definitely not restful i find i'm all over the map but you know reading is really really restful for me but that might not be the case for you so figuring out something that you actually enjoy doing that is restful and doesn't consume your brain with stress is really essential to that rest piece exercise is another fantastic way to support regulating the nervous system and 
I do like to think, especially at the beginning, gentle exercise is better. So things like walking and yoga, gentle weightlifting, these things are fantastic for regulating the nervous system. Um, the reason why exercise is so potent is because we're actually creating a more sympathetic state in the body. You know, we're, we're directly increasing heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, etc. when we're doing these things. And then we're showing the body that we can come down from this response. So we're creating a sympathetic response and we're also coming down from a sympathetic response, which is creating this mechanism of learning in the body that it is okay to be in sympathetic and it's okay to come down. And it's proving to ourselves that we can actually come out of a more sympathetic state. So it's learning that efficient navigation between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So on top of the other many, many, many benefits that exercise has, it is essential to learning how to regulate the nervous system. Other things that are fantastic are meditation and mindfulness. And there's a difference between these two. Mindfulness is the act of being present no matter what you're doing. So, you know, if I'm cooking, (laughs) I tend not to be as present as I should be because I'm stressing about what's happening in my kitchen. However, for someone who might find cooking very restful, it can be very, very mindful. You know, we're smelling the smells that are coming in and we're looking at the food that we're cooking and we're being very present with ourselves in the moment as we're doing this. And mindfulness is something that we can do anywhere throughout our day. I can be mindful as I write my notes down. I can be mindful as I have a conversation and not let my brain end up in a different planet as I'm doing that. Meditation is a very specific form of mindfulness where we're actually, you know, either listening to something guided or we're just silence for several minutes where we're actually just going inward and closing our eyes and having a moment where we're being just mindful of what's happening in the body. That can look very, very different for everyone else, but it is different than pure mindfulness. Meditation is a very specific mindfulness practice and meditation is fantastic for nervous system regulation. It's not for everyone. Um, Part of the reason for that is because for some people with trauma, it's not always safe to be in the body, but there are other ways around that. We'll get into that in another video, but mindfulness and meditation, amazing. Other things that are really supportive of the nervous system are eating good quality foods. Fats are awesome. Healthy fats are really, really great for the nervous system. Um, the the myelin sheath, which is um, a series of cells that surround and support and nourish the, the, um, the nerves of the nervous system, they love fats. And so fats are really, really great for supporting the health of the nervous system. So good quality, healthy fats, eat your avocados, all that stuff, nuts, really, really great. In addition to all your leafy greens and, and everything else that's part of a good, healthy, balanced diet. Other things that are really helpful for the nervous system are things like shaking. Um, we can get into the the specifics of why shaking is really helpful for the nervous system, but shaking has kind of a reset in the nervous system. It's, um, it's, it's a really powerful way to regulate the nervous system. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a sit and shake. It can be dancing. It can be, you know, like shaking it out. It can be whatever it looks like to you. Shaking is a really powerful way to regulate the nervous system. Some other things include being out in nature. Um, I, nature never ceases to amaze me. I'm forever in awe anytime I'm out in nature. And so if you've enjoyed any time in nature, you know, the incredible healing powers that it has. And so I encourage anyone who wants to regulate their nervous system to just spend some time, some time outside, put your feet in the sand, walk in the trees, swim in the ocean or the lake, whatever that looks like to you. Nature is the bomb.com. Uh, lastly, what I want to touch on in terms of regulating the nervous system is connection, connection with other humans or with animals, whatever feels safe to you as humans, we are meant to be in communication and in connection with others. If you think about, you know, the last phone call you had where you just caught up with a friend, how did you feel when you hung up the phone? You know, when you went for coffee with that friend or You know, you just sat on the couch and cuddled with your partner. Human connection and even more specifically human touch or animal, you know, if you're cuddling with your dog, these things are so calming to the nervous system and really, really help to regulate, you know, therapy dogs are are 
very, very powerful. And there's a reason why, you know, we've, we've moved to that as something to be supportive of the nervous system because connection with other living beings is incredibly powerful. So I know that there's lots and lots and lots of more fantastic modalities for regulating the nervous system. Those are the ones that, you know, we've touched on today, but feel free to add anything else that you love to do to regulate your nervous system down below. I'd love to hear about it. Um, and I'm going to be making more specific videos around these tools for regulating the nervous system. And we'll get into the specifics of them down the road. But in the meantime, thanks a lot for listening. And I hope that you're feeling maybe a little more regulated after watching this. Thanks.